in the previous class we have uh, completed unit number 3 and now we are going to start with unit number 4 that deals with push down automata so push down automata so before starting with push down automata just go into uh, what we have studied till now right so we have studied something called as languages and the thing that we are dealing or the kind of languages that we are dealing in this particular course are called as the conceptual languages right so uh, in this conceptual languages according to chomsky hierarchy we have already seen that there are four kinds of languages as type 0 type 1 type 2 and type 3 among which we have already studied the type 3 language which is also known as the regular language right so we have seen that there is uh, one kind of language which is called as a regular language and this regular language can be represented by a finite automata which is the machine format for this finite automata so we have seen uh, that this regular language can be represented by two things first is the machine format of this regular language known as finite automata which is abstract machine and another thing through which you can represent the language or regular language is called as regular expression this we have already seen right but here we 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 came to a conclusion that there are certain set of languages uh, which we are not able to uh, represent by using a finite automata do you remember any such language for which we were not able to design a finite automata right so the question is there are we able to represent all conceptual languages using finite automata so the answer is already given by me that we have studied some languages for which we were not able to design a finite automata right and uh, therefore the answer to this question is no so this set of languages for which we don't have a finite automata either a deterministic or a non deterministic one such languages are called as non regular languages right then as we have a machine structure a uh, format to represent this regular language then obviously there must be some machine format for representing these non regular languages and that uh, machine structure is nothing but push down automata we will go into detail of it right so this non regular languages are not represented by finite automata an example of such kind of languages which are not represented by finite automata is l equals to a bar n b bar n where n is greater than equals to 1 this we have already seen we tried to design a finite automata for this particular thing and we ended up designing a automata for a closure b closure right so we have designed an automata for this particular thing that is a closure b closure but the problem over here was this particular language or this particular automata was accepting all the strings that have this particular pattern that is a power n b power n but along with it it was also accepting other strings of a and b where a and a was uh, b was followed by a right so that was the problem so we only wanted that this automata should accept this kind of strings wherein the number of a's are followed by equal number of b's but here we were getting all those strings but along with these strings there were certain other strings that were also accepted by the finite automata right so uh, when anal we analyzed this particular thing like this was the automata that was accepting a closure b closure so you were able to read any number of a and you were able to read any number of b but at least one a followed by one b right so uh, here the problem was that this automata was not able to count the number of a and number of b so unless it is able to count the number of a and number of b uh, we will not be able to check whether the number of a's are equal to number of b's right so here we came to a conclusion that there is a problem with finite automata that is it is not able to remember how many a's or how many b's it has read right so the problem was memory because at any state of finite automata we are just able to predict what could be the previous symbol that is red like suppose if i am in q1 then there is a chance that the previous symbol that is red 
is a only right so how many a we were not able to uh, crack right but we are now sure that at least one a is red if i am in q1 so the previous symbol that was red is predictable over here if i am in qf and obviously at least b must have been red at the previous symbol that is red is b but there can be any other state through which i could come to this particular point for this particular automata there is only a b that is red right before that uh, i may have read a i may have read three a's i may have read anything right so the problem with automata is that it lack a memory it is lack of memory is the problem of automata and if there is no memory it was uh, or less memory it was not able to count the number of a's and b's right so to overcome this problem we have to design or the a machine is required that will have a memory and by using that memory it would be able to count the number of symbols like in this particular language it would be able to count number of a's and number of b's and then compare them right so for that purpose we need a new machine that has some kind of memory through which we can represent some set of non regular languages right so uh, then what we did we modified the finite automata by adding a memory to it so finite automata with memory and the memory uh, is added in form of stack so that is a infinite memory uh, that is added to finite automata and a finite automata along with stack gives you something called as push down automata and now this push down automata is able to represent some set of non regular languages i am not saying all non regular languages i am saying that it is able to represent some set of non regular languages right so uh, how how this would help us to accept a par n b par n right so uh, the logic of using stack over here is that we would be making use of a stack so whenever your automata would read a as an input then it would copy that a on the stack that is a equivalent a or an equivalent symbol for counting that a will be pushed on to the stack right so if it has read 1a it would push 1a or you can consider any other symbol to be pushed on the stack right so a is read a is pushed another a is read another a is, a is pushed on to the stack another a is read another a is on a is pushed on to the stack so in this way we are remembering that how many the number of a's are there on the top of the stack that many a's has been read by the machine right and then after that we want to compare it with b that is the number of a should be equal to number of b's so stack we have three kind of operation push pop and traverse that is keep it as it is so uh, when i read a i pushed a on to the stack now to match it with number of b what i would do i would read read a b on uh, from the input symbol and if there is a b and there is a equivalent a on the top of the stack then i would pop it right then i move ahead again if there is a b uh, and there is a a on the stack i will pop it in this way if after reading all b's there is no a on the stack that means i have read equal number of b's as the number of a's right so that logic would be uh, used over here in push dot automata for that we will see through a model so this is a model of uh, push dot automata uh, and it consists of a input tape and stack memory and the third thing which is very important is finite control so we had a finite control and an input tape on your finite automata also but along with this two thing there is an additional thing that is a stack right and the read head is there that will read a symbol that is uh, from the input tape one symbol at a time and this read head will move from left to right one step at a time right there is another thing that is uh, taken care by the finite control is it takes it looks the top of the stack symbol right so this z0 is the initial top of this uh, stack like we have q0 as the initial state so at start there must be some symbol on the top of the stack so this symbol is represented by z0 you can use any other symbol to represent it right so this is the stack 
with Z0 as the initial uh, top of the stack. This is finite control Q0. And this is a read head which reads a symbol from the input tip one at a time and move one step to the right from left to right. It moves from left to right, right? So now your pull down automata basically works on three things. Like your automata was working on two things. First was the state of the finite control and the input symbol. But your pull down automata works on three things. First is the state of the finite control, right? So initial state will be Q0 only. So based on the combination of the state of the finite control, the input symbol, which is pointed by the finite control or the read right head, and the symbol, which is on the top of the stack, right? So based on these three things, that is what the symbol, which is pointed by the finite control, the state that is that uh, in which the finite control is there and the top of the stack, the symbol which is on the top of the stack. So based on this three combination, that is Q0, A and Z0, your pull down automata will make decision, right? So what kind of decision it would make? It would make a decision whether to perform a push operation on the stack or to perform a pop operation on the stack or to traverse, right? So based on this three combination, it would take decision whether to push something on uh, something onto the stack whether to pop out something from the stack or keep the stack as it is, right? These are the three things that is to be decided by the finite control based on the input symbol and the top of the stack and the current state of the uh, finite control, right? And after making that decision and taking that action, the finite control or the read head will move one step to the right like this. So here we can see that Q0 is there, A is the input and Z0 is on the top of the stack. So here I would be explaining the push down automata for the example that we considered A power and B power and N is greater than or equals to zero, right? So here uh, Q0 is there, which is the initial state of the finite control. A is the input symbol and Z0 is the top of the stack. So what I said, the logic was whenever finite or the push down automata will read read a, a it would push a, a onto the stack right so whenever there is an initial configuration that is q0 a z0 this indicates that the uh, push down automata here now onwards whenever i'll say automata it would be push down automata right so uh, whenever there is q0 uh, the finite control is in q0 the input is a and the top of the stack is z0 it indicates that the current symbol is the first symbol of the input string, right? Because the top of the stack is Z0 now, right? And this uh, automata is in Q0. So Q0 A Z0. So this is the first A which is read by the finite control. So it should be pushed onto the top of the stack, right? So as to count the number of A. So what we'll do whenever this combination is there, the combination is Q0 A Z0. So we will be performing a push operation, right? What we'll do, we'll push A onto the top of the stack. Now, this was the top of the stack. When you push an element on the top of the stack, the new element would be added at the top of the stack, right? So this would push A on the stack. And this, you can see that this read head is moved one step to the right. Okay. And now this is the new top of the stack because this was the initial and now we have pushed some symbol. So this will be the new top of the stack. Again, your finite control is in Q0 suppose or any state. And in this state, again, it is pointing to an input and to the symbol which is on the top of the stack. Now, based on this combination, again, the push down automata will take some decision whether to push, pop or traverse on the stack, right? So here, in this state, if A is the input, so again, our logic was simple. Whenever you read A, push A onto the stack. So A is there, top of the stack is again A. So we'll again push A onto the stack. So we'll push A. So we have pushed A. Simultaneously, your top of the stack will change and your read head will move one step to the right. Okay, now your finite control is pointing to B and the top of the stack is A. 
so as soon as ba started so the language was a par n b par n so once ba started there won't be any a right so b is started that means we have to match these b's with the number of a's now because number of a's and b should be equal right so what we'll do we'll again check if the finite control is pointing to b and the top of the stack is a this means that this b is now matched with this a because first b so there is a equivalent a for this b right so now again your push down automata will make a decision to pop push a traverse so our logic was whenever it would read a b and there is a equivalent a on the top of the stack will pop right so it would pop a from the top of the stack right and again it would move the read head one step to the right and now the new top as soon as this a was eliminated or popped from the stack the new stack will be the previous a right so the new top of the stack will be this a again it would check the state of the finite control the input symbol and the new top of the stack so based on this combination there is a b and an equivalent a is there so again it would make a decision to pop a from the stack and as soon as it is popped there would be uh, a change in the read head it would move one step to the right and then there would be new top of the stack right so now again your finite control is reading some symbol now the string is over so there is epsilon and the top of the stack is z0 right so now based on this combination your push down automata will take again decision whether to push pop or traverse right so now there are two kind of see i am telling you another thing now there are two kind of acceptance by push down automata first is that the string can be accepted either by reaching to a final state like in push down automata uh, in finite automata what we have seen any string is accepted by finite automata if it starts from the initial state read the complete string and reach a final state right so the same logic is applied over here also if it starts from the initial state read the complete string reach a fi final state right and there is no additional symbol on the top of the stack there is only initial top of the stack right so we say that the uh, string is accepted by final state right so there is acceptance by final state that is your uh, top of the stack may have some symbol the stack may have some symbol on it but you have reached final state this is first kind of acceptance that is this string is matched completely there is z0 on the top of the stack and the finite control is in final state then we say that the string is accepted by final state another kind of acceptance is by acceptance by empty stack so in that case whenever this configuration is obtained that is q0 or any q is pointing to a empty string string that is epsilon and the top of the stack is z0 so in this configuration uh, the push down automata takes a decision to pop it uh, the top of the stack that is to pop z0 from the stack so as soon as this z0 will be popped from the stack your stack will be empty right and the string is completely read so this this is also another kind of acceptance by push down automata so in this case your finite control may or may not reach final state right may or may not reach final state but here we say that the string is accepted and the acceptance is by empty stack as the stack is empty so the string is accepted by the push down automata so there are two kind of acceptance by push down automata first is acceptance by final state second is acceptance by uh, empty stack we'll see it in detail when we go through an example again right so this is how your push down automata works definition of push down automata is it is seven tuple so the this seven tuples like your machine uh, finite automata was five tuple so this is seven tuple is represented by using seven tuples and uh, is given by m equals to q sigma gamma delta q0 z0 and f right so here q 
is the same as that your finite automata that is it is finite non empty set of states right so this is finite non empty set of states sigma is finite non empty set of input alphabets this gamma is a new symbol over here which is nothing but finite set of tape symbols right so here this tape symbols can be subset of uh sigma or it may have some additional symbols also right uh so this gamma is finite set of symbols so you can have same number of uh, same type of symbols which are in sigma or you may have some additional symbols right or some other symbols totally different symbols so gamma is nothing but finite set of tape symbols so this is uh, typing error because when i pushed space so it has converted this del into capital delta this is capital delta this, this is delta right so actually this should be this only uh, so this is a transition mapping and uh, we have seen uh, so the transition mapping over here is q into sigma union epsilon so this is a non deterministic kind of thing uh, what we have studied in dfa so here this is q into sigma plus epsilon epsilon can be there into gamma gamma means as i said that in a particular state on a particular input and a particular tape symbol uh, stack symbol sorry this should be stack symbol tape symbols are nothing but the input alphabets only right so these are the stack symbols uh, so on a particular state a uh, input from sigma uh, along with epsilon and a uh, symbol from the top of the stack based on this three combination your push down automata changes the state of the push down automata and push pop or traverse any symbol from gamma which is nothing but the stack symbol so it can be one or multiple symbols from gamma therefore it is said that uh, gamma closure so it can push multiple elements on the top of the stack it can pop multiple elements from the top of the stack right or it may simply pop a single element or traverse right so therefore it is gamma closure so if the state input and stack symbol combination goes to a particular state and uh, push pop or traverse operation if this is fixed then such kind of push down automata are called as deterministic push down automata right if this combination is always fixed that is in a particular state on a particular input and a particular top of the stack if the automata always goes to a fixed state and a fixed uh, push pop or traverse operation is performed then such push down automata are called as deterministic push down automata right then there is another kind of push down automata that is that can goes to any combination of the state and uh, stack symbol right uh, that is power set of q into gamma star this kind of push down automata are called as non deterministic push down automata right so uh, it just goes to uh, the power set of q gam q into gamma star so then next is q0 which is the initial state of the push down automata z0 is the initial top of the stack and f is nothing but a uh, subset of q which is nothing but set of final states and as i said that the push down automata can perform acceptance by final state or acceptance by empty stack therefore the set of final state can be a empty set also right okay yes. so uh the move of push down automata is uh, represented by three things uh, in the following manner like uh, as i said for uh, this is for deterministic push down automata as i said over here that is a transition from q on a as input and x as the top of the stack if the transition is always fixed that if this is the input that is in state q a is the input and top of the stack is x the transition is to a state and the top of the stack is changed to y that is x is replaced by y 
okay so if this combination is there and it is fixed that is always whenever this combination will be there on the finite control uh, the finite control will always change the state to p and change the top of the stack from x to y right that is x will be replaced by y so this is always fixed then it is called as a uh, deterministic push down automata that is the transition is fixed for the combination of q a and x but if the combination is not fixed then it is called as non deterministic push down automata that means on q a and x the push down automata may change the state to p and change the top of the stack to y or it may go to a state r and change the top of the stack to z or it may go to uh, uh, state m and change the top of the stack or keep the top of the stack as as x it is right uh, like x only so there can be another combination wherein the automata will go to a state m and will keep the top of the stack as x only right so this can be there so there can be multiple options that is in a particular combination q a and x the push down automata may change the state to p and change the top of the stack to y or it may go to r and change the top of the stack to z or it may go to any other combination that is there are multiple transitions on this combination and such kind of uh, push down automata are called as non deterministic push down automata right then uh, consider this particular transition rule so how these operations are performed like how we can replace this top of the stack with this new symbol so there are certain number of operations that are to be performed right so we'll see interpretation of this transition rule uh, so uh, this is a transition rule delta q a x that is equals to p y that is it changes the state so this uh, transition indicates that the current state of the push down automata is q current input is a and the current top of the stack is x right based on this combination the finite control changes the state from q to p so this is the new state this was current state this is the next state so if this combination is there the push down automata will change the state to p so it will go from q to p and it will change the top of the stack from x to y so the first is state transition of pda from state q to p this indicates the first thing that is that there is a transition of state from state q to state p second is i already told you that a is the input symbol that is being read so this is the current symbol which is pointed by the read write head okay so a is the input symbol that is being read then x is the current top of the stack as i told you so this is the top of the stack which is pointed by the finite control and y is replacement of x see here i am saying that it is replacing x so whenever you perform push operation it would perform replacement right so here x is if such kind of thing is there right when it will push and when it will uh, replace i will uh, explain properly when we'll see an example right so if there is x and there is a single y so it means that it is replacement x is directly replaced by y so to replace x by y first of all you will have to pop this x from the top of the stack and then push y so here there will be basically two operations performed first is pop and then second is push but this cannot be this is about implementation when you will be implementing it through code at that time you would be first removing x and then put uh, putting y but in the logic you can simply write push right so x is replacement uh, y is replacement of x on the stack and it is from gamma closure so this y symbol will be any uh, combination of any symbols from gamma right so for replacing x with y pda will perform three kind of operation that is push pop and traverse so how this operation will be performed so whenever you want to do pop operation whenever pop operation is to be performed this y must be replaced with epsilon like this so whenever you want to perform pop operation what we will do we will set the value of y as epsilon okay so this x will be replaced by epsilon so this means that we are performing pop operation that is we are popping x from the 
top of this stack right so for that purpose we would be directly performing a pop x operation right so whenever you want pop operation to be that done so this y will be replaced by epsilon so there will be a combination delta of q a x will go to p epsilon so this means there would be a pop operation then uh, if you want uh, to keep it as it is that is traverse that is x should be as it is you will not put push you will not pop x will be as it is on the uh, top of the stack so you would be replacing this y with x right so this x will be as it is uh, so instead of this y you will be keeping x so we will set y as x now in order to keep this x as it is this is called as traverse operation but when you would be implementing it this traverse will not be as it is for this traverse operation what you would be doing you would be first popping this x out of the stack and then again pushing it back right so there would be two operation in order to maintain traverse operation you will be performing two operation first will be popping of x and second will be pushing of x right therefore we are performing multiple time push and pop therefore it is called as push down automata you are pushing and popping uh, elements from this stack therefore it is called as push down automata right so you you will be first popping and then pushing so this is called as traverse operation so here there will be two operations when you are popping there would be a single operation pop and you are traversing you will first pop that symbol then push this i am talking about logic when you would be designing you can keep it as it is and then third is that you you will be replacing this x with some new symbols that is series of symbols so if you want to replace it with multiple as i said that it will the next symbol can be from gamma closure so it can be any combination of stack symbols so you can set y equals to z1 z2 dot 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 any combination of uh, the stack symbol as zn right now this will be set so as to replace this x with these symbols right now i am saying that this x will be replaced by everything right so the first operation that would be performed is first of all you will be popping this and then you will be pushing this symbol such that this z should be on the top of this stack z1 should be on the top of this stack this should be at the end right for that purpose what would do we will first pop this element from the stack and then push uh these elements z1 z2 zn but in order to make z1 as the top of the stack what we'll do we'll push these elements in the reverse order right so that means zn will be pushed first then z n minus 1 then z n minus 2 and so on then lastly z2 and last one z1 will be pushed so that this will go at the bottom and z1 will come at the top of the stack right so these are the three operations uh, that can be performed on a push down automata if you have not understood these things uh, just ignore this if you skip this part then also it is fine just you should know this part the first four points uh, first three points and uh, in five uh, uh, in fourth point you just and say why is replacement of x on this stack this theoretical part right if this part is not understood you may skip it because uh, in exam no one will ask you how this is performed just you will have to write a push or pop uh, in this if you uh, just write traverse also no one will ask you why this is traverse only but how it is actually implemented for that it is pop and push because we say it is a push down automata that is we are performing push and pop operations simultaneously therefore this is required this is actual implementation and in for exam no one will ask you this so then there is something called as instantaneous descriptor uh, we'll study this in the next class uh, basically id is nothing but it gives you the uh, current configuration of your push down automata in what state your push down automata is that is it gives you information about the uh, current state of the uh, finite control current input symbol and the current top of the stack so this id is defined by three things first is uh, current state 
second is input symbol that is input string and third is the uh, stack symbol what is on the top of the stack we'll see it in details in the next class